Hey friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Before we get started, I've got a quick question for you. Are CEOs the new doctors? We always talk about a rise in AI and technology in healthcare, and we always make the assumption that this technology is going to be used by doctors and healthcare practitioners to improve the lives of patients. However, one thing I think we don't place enough emphasis on is, what is this technology going to do for patients? In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about two entrepreneurs who are venturing into the healthcare space. And I'm going to be discussing why I think they're coming into the healthcare space, some of the benefits of them being in the healthcare space, and also maybe some of the drawbacks. So unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably noticed that in the last few years, there has been a rise of health information online. And one of the reasons for this could be just the fact that everybody became health conscious, like we literally just lived through a pandemic. So people started taking a more proactive approach to their healthcare. However, for me, one place that I've seen this a lot is people who are actively going out there to seek information. And when they actively go out there to seek information, the biggest sources at the moment on the internet that you can find lie somewhere between Andrew Huberman and Diary of a CEO. Of course, there is more sources out there, but these are the sources that you continually see being shared by people. Let's take Diary of a CEO, for example. In 2024 alone, I think almost every episode that they've had so far this year has been with a doctor of some sort. And even when these people are not necessarily medical doctors, but let's say PhD doctors, in the title, it will still be acknowledging the fact that this person is a doctor. The fact that we are democratizing access to medical knowledge is great because for so long, this knowledge has always been trapped behind some sort of paywall. But now what we are finding is that people are able to access this knowledge wherever they want. And of course, this has massive benefits such as people being able to be proactive with their health. It frustrates me so much that people are not equipped as much as I would personally like for them to be proactive with their health. Whereas we kind of expect people to keep coming back to the source, i.e. a hospital or a GP practice to get healthcare information. And I think people should be able to get good quality information from the comfort of their own home. Now, one of the concerns of course if people are able to get access to all this information is the existence of pseudoscience and this is something that I've seen Stephen Bartlett come under a lot of fire for the guests that he brings on the show a lot of people will say like actually this is not rooted in science like scientific papers are probably one of the best ways to tell the truth and one of the best ways to tell a lie people say that the guests that are coming onto the show are actually maybe closer to the lie or they have a hidden agenda or a product to sell which is why they will push a certain narrative in the episodes the other frustration that people have had with this access to healthcare information just in the comfort of their own homes is the fact that almost that things contradict each other and of course things will contradict each other because a lot of this information is on a case-by-case -case basis but when you're listening to it at scale it will almost sound like it's almost like one minute you told me that I should be taking weight loss tablets however the next minute you told me that actually I should be gaining weight because losing weight is not good for you and yeah like it just creates a lot of confusion within people one thing I find super interesting is almost this market which exists at the moment, especially for direct-to-consumer healthcare brands. And I think Stephen Bartlett and Iman Gadzi are two people who are perfect examples of people who have seen the market and are just tapping on that door for now, but I think are going to tap on it even bigger. Let's take Iman Gadzi for example. Recently, he launched Big Day. A big day essentially is a website of almost like health and wellness products and everything sold out relatively quite quickly. So one of the products on the website is hydration sachets. And of course, this is appealing to a certain market who want to live a lifestyle like Iman Gadzi maybe, who are high performers, both at business and also taking care whilst they're running and doing other activities. And this is super interesting because people who watch Iman Gazi's videos will want to emulate and live a similar lifestyle so that they can also get similar results. So that places Iman Gazi in a very nice position to be able to have a D2C healthcare brand. The other great thing about having a D2C healthcare brand when you're a person like Iman Gazi or Stephen Bartlett is the fact that you control the distribution channel. And this is probably where all of their success lies. Like everything else, there is so many people that have done hydration sachets. There are so many people that have continuous glucose monitors and all these other products. However, what they have as a competitive advantage is the distribution channel. Let's take Stephen Bartlett now. 
Stephen Butler has been putting out so many healthcare episodes of late and I think this is because he is preparing to launch a healthcare product eventually. And this healthcare product might be something like um, hydration sachets, it might be something like a health and wellness app, it might be something like his recent investment into Until. And I think there is something which is boiling up for now but he hasn't actually quite said it. And what it allows when you own the distribution channel is you can almost prime people's minds so that by the time he gets to launch, he has six months worth of content, which is all healthcare related. And he's almost delivered you value prior to the launch of whatever product he has. And I'm a big believer that in the next six months or in 2024, Stephen Bartlett will launch a healthcare brand of some sort. And one of my reasons for saying this is openly some of his investments. He's got an investment in Huel, an investment in Zoe, an investment in Until, which is Gems. And it wouldn't surprise me if the fourth one is a massive investment into a personal venture of his own. Let's take the diary of a CEO healthcare and wellness brand. In the world of business, there are many people who acknowledge that for them to be able to perform at the highest levels, health is something that they can't compromise. And both Iman, Steven and Andrew Huberman are people who all know this. So they almost have the perfect target audience that they're reaching out to because there is a lot of people that can relate to them in a business sense. And if Stephen Bartlett starts saying today that he takes care of his health in this particular way, all of a sudden, all of the people who want to be able to operate at a high level like Stephen Bartlett will start to follow in his footsteps and he already has that audience. So for us in the healthcare industry, I think we're going to start seeing a very small trend in people being more proactive about their health. And this being because the content that they consume online will be more health focused. Before it wasn't really cool to talk about healthcare information, but all of a sudden it's become super sexy to be able to talk about healthcare online. To be able to tell people that you're a hybrid athlete. Like I started running recently and it's become a personality trait all of a sudden. So it has become this thing where it's, it's cool to talk about healthcare online, especially when you're young, let's say between the ages of 20 to 50, and you're taking a proactive approach. It makes people feel good about themselves. I think the healthcare professionals of tomorrow need to get better at making sure that the information that people are getting off podcasts and off other mediums is actually reliable. They need to be also in those same spaces where people are creating the content. At the moment, what's happening is there is an influx of content on Spotify, on YouTube and other mediums. However, when you look at actual information, let's say from a Great Ormond Street Hospital or a Guides and St. Thomas Hospitals or a Cleveland Clinic, you don't typically see content coming out of these places. And now I know the people in these offices are probably saying that actually we create information videos for patients. However, there is an opportunity there to combat this pseudoscience that people say is out there by having real science come from the professionals where it's actually the research has been carried out at Cleveland Clinic, for instance. So if I'm Iman Gadzi or Stephen Bartlett, I'm looking at the healthcare industry like healthcare is a super big market and it's a market where people will continually keep coming back. And this is because you're not going to take a hydration sachet once and leave it all together. You're going to take a hydration sachet drink it today, if you start to see results, that's almost going to become part of your lifestyle. So it creates a recurring customer, which is of course great for business. And it allows them to create this brand and this ecosystem that is, if you want to be like Iman, or if you want to be like Steven, make sure that you take your health seriously because that's essentially one of the pinnacles to be able to allow them to do everything else. So at the start of this video, I asked the question, are doctors the new CEOs? And this is because there is a massive trend of direct-to-consumer healthcare brands, which I can see coming out over the next 18 months, maybe, from influential people like Iman Gadzi, Stephen Bartlett, and a whole range of online influencers. And for people like this, healthcare is a very interesting market because in an ever-changing world, one of the only things that will remain constant is the need for people to access healthcare information and the need for people to improve their health. And with the size of the audience that they already have, respectively, this is already the market that they've created. Let's take Dyer of a CEO. If they are able to sell a healthcare product to say 3% of their YouTube subscribers, that is about 150,000 people that they already have to sell a direct-to-consumer healthcare product. 
And of course we know since the beginning of time we've been bombarded with ads about Yule. So I'm sure Stephen already knows how many people are going straight from the podcast and able to access things such as Yule. So let me know in the comments below what you think. My prediction for 2024 is Stephen Bartlett's going to launch a healthcare company of some sort at some point. And I'm super excited to see what this is because direct-to-consumer plays in healthcare are typically quite difficult because of the amount of capital that is needed to get off the ground. However, when you have an audience of 5 million people, do you still have the same challenges of startup costs? Let me know in the comments what you think below. And if you found this video interesting, please share it with a friend. And if you made it this far into the video, I am so, so grateful that you made it this far. And I'd love for you to just throw an emoji into the comments, just so I can see the people who really engage and really like listening to this content. And I will do whatever I can to make sure that I can continue to improve these videos for you.